Wendy Parsley here with Jeremiah School of Law Education. We have had a lot of questions about how to advocate for your kids in the special ed system when the, within the public schools and how you fight for them, how you advocate, uh, how you navigate through that system to get them services and how you make changes to the services and all of that. So it is a huge problem nationwide. We are in Texas and have, you know, where the state actually made a rule that you couldn't have more than a certain number of students in special ed. So that's what we're fighting now. That's been overturned because it's illegal. So the first thing you need to do is everything needs to be put in writing. Everything. You don't want to have a conversation. You need to put it in emails. You need to save teacher notes. If you send a note to the school, you need to keep copies. If you are in a situation where you have a conversation with someone about your child, you need to come home, go on your computer, and send an email that reiterates the conversation, just the factual pieces. As per our conversation earlier today, this was said, I said this, if I'm incorrect, please let me know. So them not responding back to you means that they agree with what you said in the email. You print those out, all the emails, all the notes, any papers that come home for your child that show they're struggling or that they were there was an accommodation or a change to their work in the classroom that's not being done, date it, keep it. What are you going to do with all of this? Well, we call this our big notebook of shit. <clears throat> and this has almost everything in it. We've actually had to take some stuff out about our child. We have tabs for medical. We have tabs for schools. We have tabs for any other services, doctor visits, uh, behavior plans, communication with the schools. All of that is right here. When you walk in with this notebook, a couple times you may have to pull some papers out to say, this is our conversation on said day. You have all your emails and everything right there. And after a while, when you walk into the meeting with the notebook and you make reference to something, they won't ask you to produce it because they know that it's in the notebook. So this is a lifesaver. It also means that anytime anybody asks for things at medical appointments, you have everything you need. So one of the other first things you need to do is find out who's in charge of the special education department in your school district. In Texas, those are called the head of special ed or the special ed director. In other states, they may be called different things, but you can ask the principal or call your local school district and say, who's in charge of special education services here? And can I have their email address and their phone number, please? Then once you have that, Every time you want to ask for testing or an ARD meeting, you make sure that you send it to the principal, the teacher, maybe the assistant principal, maybe the counselors or diagnosticians if they're involved, and the head of special ed. You have to do that so that they know, oh, they're talking to the big boss up there. So. The other problem is that a lot of times when, when referrals and things are done by parents or you ask a question, the timeline is not followed. There's a federal timeline for every state in the United States. They have to follow this. Your state can make shorter time frames, but they can't go longer. So I'm going to give you the one in Texas that I was given from the Texas Education Agency. And this is... You do a referral, you say, hey, I want my kid tested for dyslexia. I want my kid tested for special ed. I want my kid just tested. Then they have 15 days, school days, three weeks, to decide and then tell you, yes, we agree or we don't agree. They'll send you a packet home that you fill out. Then um, you give your, your uh, consent for the testing. And then they have 45 days, school days, nine weeks, to complete the testing. And then after that, they have 30 days, 30 calendar days, to 
get all of their testing uh, together, all of their data compiled, and set up an ARD meeting so that your ARD meeting would have to fall in that time frame. So then you go to the ARD meeting, which is where everybody talks about how the testing came out, what services your child qualifies for, uh, what, what kinds of things they offer. Here's the tricky part. You need to be prepared for that before you go to the ARD meeting. The school district is not the ARD meeting. The people that are the ARD committee, the people that do the testing is not the ARD committee. And they may call them an IEP team or different things like this, but the laws are the same. The school district does not make those decisions without your participation. It's illegal. So I advise that you meet with doctors, therapists, teachers in that 45 days that you have and say, hey, we're testing my kid for this, and what are some things that you think would be helpful in the classroom? Have them put it in writing. You bring that, and in our case, I actually provided that to them ahead of time so that they could already have some of those things written in there. You come with everything in writing. Pausing for effect. Everything, you come with that in writing. You meet with the teachers, what kind of struggles are we having? Write everything down. They will say to you, well, the ARD committee is going to do that, or we're, we're going to wait for the ARD committee, or they do that in the ARD meeting. No, no. You are the ARD committee. The teachers and the, and the parents are the bulk of the ARD committee. You are the people that know this student. So that is the ARD committee. You'll have to state that because a lot of times the teachers don't know. They think that it all comes from the central office people, the testing people, the administration, but that's not true. After that, you have your meeting, and they have five days to start providing services. However, you can say, I want to waive my five days, and those services have to start the next day, immediately the next day, period. So, and once you walk in there and you have all of these things written down and you sound like you know what you're doing, then you are more likely to get things done. You get copies of everything. You can request copies of the testing before the ARD meeting. You can request copies of their reports before the ARD meeting so that you can look at all that and see, you know, what kinds of things you want to ask for for your child. And then I would advise going on the internet, you Google, um, my student has a auditory processing problem. What kind of accommodations should I ask for for this? Um, things to change in the classroom if your child has behavioral challenges or autism or ADHD. And you'll find lists of things that you can ask for that you wouldn't even think of, and that's helpful. So. Um, the, the last thing that you need to know, they have to do an ARD meeting at least once a year. But let's say that your student starts having problems in the classroom, something's not working, it falls apart. We did that about two or three months in, it was falling apart. Or the behavior plan is not being followed. Or the IEP, the individual educational plan, is not being followed then you, you contact the principal and you say, look, this is what's going on. You talk to the teachers. This is not working. What can we do? Usually nothing will change there. Newsflash, nothing will change. You call an ARD meeting. You can call an ARD meeting every week if you want to. You will inform the principal, the teachers, the people at central office, hey, we need to have another ARD meeting. We need to get on the same page. This is not working. We need to change the plan. And once you do that a couple times, they are much more willing to make changes when things come up because they really don't want to have to get 10 or 15 people together to have a meeting all the time. So you can ask for changes. This is not working. Again, you're going to take all of your stuff in writing. Say, this is the evidence that I have that there's a problem and we need to talk about what we need to do to change it. Now, you'd think that after you did all of that, that it would be kind of smooth sailing after that. Not so much, because what usually happens is the school year ends, you fought all year, the school year ends, 
you go back to school the next year and a lot of times you start over because you have a new people or you change schools and you have a new group of people. Um, it is what it is. This is just what we do. So we will be posting other videos about this and if you'd like to comment or come to our Facebook page and post things there. It's good for it to be public on there because other people have those questions also and we can answer them publicly as well. Um, we're here to support you and you need to keep fighting because it's your kids.